We are here today at Holy Family to launch our Listen and Learn storytelling series. In light of recent events, we felt the need to offer a place for people to tell their stories who might not normally have a chance to. Our first series features members of the St. Benedict the Moor Parish, talking about what it means to be a black Catholic in Omaha. Someday we hope to open the whole chapel up for you to bring in your lunch, to listen and learn in person. But for now, please enjoy these storytellers with your lunch at home. I have three brothers and sisters, two brothers and a sister that were born before me. There's eight of us. And after the second set of kids, there was a six year division. And then the second set of us, the six of us that were left, we all, she, we all became Catholic. She talked to Father Killorn. She couldn't afford it really, but Father Killorn worked it out with her. So we all became students at St. Benedict. So the last six of us went to St. Benedict grade school. At that time, when I was there, there was only probably about five to six white students. The rest of us were all minority. So we didn't really have what you call a, a racist problem because the nuns that we had were servants of Mary, very strict, very strict. And they, we were all God's children and we all got along. And if you didn't get along, they made sure we got along. All the priests we had at St. Benedict were very welcoming to any nationality. I mean, it, it, didn't, it didn't make any difference who you were, how much money you had. And when I was a young girl, Father Killorn used to walk through our whole parish. He'd walk through the whole parish and visit you. You would be sitting there in the evening and he'd knock on the door and he'd sit and talk with you. And you know, so he knew his parishioners very well. And he visited their homes and he walked. If it was racism out there, we didn't experience it in school. And we didn't experience it in our upbringing in that environment. But outside of school, there were problems. Because <laughs> we were a mixed family. The blacks would tease us, and then the whites would tease us. So we were kind of like, outside of the school environment, we, we experienced racism long before a lot of people did because we were fighting between two cultures. But my mother used to say, um, it's like chocolate milk. God made milk, and some of it's chocolate and some of it's white. You know, So she said, it's still milk. So she, we would come home and be upset or crying and she'd always tell us the story about God created more than one color and we just gotta learn to get along. I had a girlfriend, I was 13 years old, real close, very close. She wasn't a Catholic, but she passed away. And then at that time, the Catholic church wasn't open to let you visit other churches. And I was told I couldn't go to her funeral and that hurt me so bad. I thought, what difference does it make you know, at that point, at 13 years of age, I didn't quite understand the logistics of the church, so I didn't understand, why can't I go to this funeral? And my mother used to tell me there was a reason, and it was probably that I shouldn't have been there. You know, so she said, it was probably God's way of saying, you don't need to go. So, but I, that kind of, that hurt me about the church. I had two sisters that went to Marion, and I had a, a, a brother that went to Creighton Prep, and I went to St. Joe, I was the first minority that went to St. Joe High School over in South Omaha. But I had issues in high school too with them. The very first day I got to school they said, well, we, they were expecting a, a black student and they were looking, well, where's the black student? And then, so I guess I didn't appear to be black enough for them or didn't represent what they thought black was coming. I was a librarian to help pay for my tuition and I had confrontations with kids in the library all the time. And Sister Corona was my high school teacher, she was a Josephite nun. And she used to tell me, Madwina be strong, Madwina be, but a lot of times I was in her office <laughs> because after so much wording, I had to let loose. And I was always taught to express what you want, like it or not, I have the right to say it. You don't have to believe it and you don't have to you know, follow it, but I have the right to say it just like you can say what you want to say. And that's when I would get in trouble. <laughs> the Catholic Church has issues among this, the teaching and, and actions. I think words, words don't speak as actions do. One of the priests that I was in a conversation with in a round table at the Archbishop office, we were in a group discussion. I was on the, on the group that closed schools and shut down churches and stuff. And he made a comment right there in front of me. I don't want any of those people from St. Bendick at my church. That to me was uncalled for. It's his opinion, he had a right to it. But it was at the place where we're working to decide whether the cheap church is open or you're gonna make that when there are black people in this parish, there are blacks at the church, that offended me very badly. Well at the time, one of the higher priests was there. Brother William, to be exact, got up out of his seat, came over and sat beside me and said, Madrina, 
Arduino. He, Arduino. He, he even knew that was wrong at that time. I had a confrontation once. It wasn't a confrontation. It was a talking conversation with the Archbishop. And I asked him, I said, I don't want to say this, but I'm feeling that this conversation is racial. And, he, and I said, you look at when, when we come out there with a problem, you don't look at us as a people with a problem. You look at us as a black, here's a black community with a problem. It should not be that. I, I was born black. I'm going to be black all my life. But I, I walked into the Catholic Church, and I want to be treated like any other Catholic anywhere else. And sometimes that doesn't come across in Catholicism. And, and a lot of it is with the priest. Excuse the way I'm going to say this, but priests take authority. They don't have any authority, but they take authority. They're there to teach me the concepts of the church and to put those into play in the faith of that church. They're not there to authoritize themselves or say what is right or wrong because the Catholic Church is a very strict, adamant church with strict principles and policies and procedures. And when you can take a priest or 10 priests and change it to the way you feel today, it's wrong. I've been a Catholic since my birth. I'm 77 years old, and that is not what I'm getting out of the faith that I've, and I also now, I went through five years of Creighton University through a Master's of Ministry program. So I understand my church a little better than the average Joe sitting in a pew. I've also, you know, I'm a lay ecclesial minister. I understand a little bit more about where I should be and what I shouldn't. My ministry is gonna be different from yours as a Catholic because of where I was raised, where I live, what I'm accustomed to. It's, a, it's the Catholics, but I have a different outlook on certain things because of how I lived it. Because I see both sides of it. Now, like I said, my father was German. I learned, we learned, I have a little bit of his culture. My mother is, is Cherokee Indian and black, okay? My grandmother, my, my father's mother was Irish. And Irish and German married together, I got that. And then my mother's Indian and black. So I have a lot of cultures infused in me, and I see it from a lot of viewpoints. I, I see it like this. Um, God made me a unique individual. I'm not you, I'm not him, I'm not anybody else, I'm me. And God gave me a certain personality, and he says, be true to that personality. He didn't tell me when I'm, when I'm around you, act like you, or be like this person. He said, be yourself, be true to who you are. I'm true to my, who I am as a person, and I'm true to my faith. Now, I believe in the Catholic Church strongly. I've had problems with it, and I've dealt with those problems, but I, I, I wouldn't leave my faith, but I think my faith needs some adjustments. I think some of the leaders in my faith need some adjustments because, because I made you the president doesn't mean you know it and I don't. Because you run the church and you get paid to run the church and I just come to mass, I don't have a say so. That's not right. This church was built for me just like it was built for you to run. You're the administrator, I'm the participant. Without me walking in that door, that church wouldn't be there. So listen to your people. Yes, I do think a white priest, an Italian, a German, any priest that they would send to St. Benedict would be good for us if that person is truly about what's good for us as a people. You're coming into a culture that you're not used to or that you're not, a, you, you're not aware of or that you're not um, comfortable with, maybe some of them. Whatever reason, you, you, you come in with a difference right off the bat. And I think if you learn to to, to deal with the people you're dealing with, you have to adapt yourself to the culture of those people and then work with those people in their culture and infuse yours in with that. But you can't just come in and push your culture on us. And the, the priests we've had at St. Benedict, the white ones we've had, have worked very well. The parish has good memories of them. They have good things to say about them. They were good for us as people. I don't think today I would be as open-minded to people I can go anywhere and I can adapt to anybody and because I have to say, look, I don't know what kind of day you had, I don't know where your mind's at, I don't know what went right for you or wrong, but I know that you're a person of God and I gotta deal with you today so I gotta back up and let you be. But I think the Catholic Church should have more interaction. And I don't mean so much interaction, let's go visit a church. Because even sitting in church, if you came to St. Benedict, you'd sit there and you'd be, you know, kind of, watching in this but I think more interaction between us as as Catholics. Unity Omaha was good, but then again not so good because they put us all in this big area, but we all sit in our separate places. We didn't intermingle. I think it would be adequate for a church to say, hey, Elkhorn's gonna invite St. Benedict for Mass, they're gonna shut down their church on that Sunday. We're all gonna go out there and we're gonna mingle or you know, something to that effect. But put us together in an environment so you can see that I am still a, a child of God. 
I joined the Catholic Church because I believe the same thing you believe. I want to be treated the same way you want to be treated. And none of this is going to rub off. God didn't put me here just to run from you. He put me here to get along with you. And I'm not saying I have to marry you, have children with you, or go to dinner with you, but accept me because I am one of God's children. I might look different, I might be different, but I'm still one of his children, and you are too. <laughs>